Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is my March book haul. And uh, we will begin briefly with something that is not a book, but I bought it for a bookish video and it's fun, so I thought I would share. I now have a dragon goblet with which I can drink wine. So expect to see this in live shows. I bought it for a particular video I'm working on, but I'm, I'm not mad about it. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and talk about all the books that have come into my collection in the month of March. I will say that in terms of books I bought for myself, this haul is a little bit on the smaller side for me this month. I'm not upset about that. I've been trying to scale back my book purchases, but I have a lot of very exciting things that were sent to me from publishers that I cannot wait to share with you all. But first, we are going to begin with my pre-orders. I had two of them this month. The first one, I didn't expect to be quite as tiny as it is, but I'm still happy to have it. I saw this on Instagram and it wasn't very expensive and now I know why it wasn't very expensive because it's tiny. But I pre-ordered Galatea, a short story by Madeline Miller from the world of Song of Achilles. I really love Madeline Miller and I just thought this was so pretty. It's this cute little special hardcover edition of a short story she wrote. Not very big, not very long, but adding it to my collection. And my other pre-order this month is one that I am very anxious to read. I feel like I'm probably going to try to pick this up soon because I also hear it's a quick read and it's so up my alley. I got Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is a YA gothic horror novel and I am so excited for it. Also, it's got interesting formatting. It's got illustrations. I love the cover. I love the whole vibe and everything I've heard about it makes me think I'm going to love this book. So I'm very excited to have it. Next, let's talk about all the books that were sent to me this month because I have a lot of really exciting ones. Tor has been very good to me as they always are, but especially this month. But I also have some other fun things. And this month you're getting a couple of picture books from me. Somebody reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in reviewing these picture books and I was like, yeah, these sound like things I would want for my kids. Send them over. So I have read them with my kids. We have reviews up on Goodreads. My kids' ratings and reviews are also included. I've got to say my oldest is a much harsher reviewer than my youngest, but I think both of these are pretty good books. So thank you to Penguin Random House and Sourcebooks for sending these along. The first book I did review in my mid-month wrap-up, so I'll link that video up above if you haven't seen it, but this is called You Are Not Alone, words by two-time Grammy nominees, The Alphabet Rockers. And I really like this. It's a pretty simple story, but it's a book about inclusivity, about friendship, and is very lyrical because musicians wrote it. It doesn't have as much a plot to it, but I do think it has some good jumping off points for conversations you might want to have with your kids. My five-year-old was less interested in this than my almost eight-year-old, so I would say this is maybe for slightly older kids that will get more out of this. But among the conversation starters in this are things like why it's important to learn how to pronounce your friends' names, even if they are a new name to you, or why it's not appropriate to ask trans or non-binary people about their private bits, things like that. And I, I just liked the diversity and the representation. And yeah, I was, I was a fan. I gave this four stars. Thank you to the publisher for sending it along. The other book was a big hit with both of my kids, and I really like this too. It's super fun. This is Miguel's Community Garden by Janae Brown Wood, and this follows a little boy named Miguel. He goes to his community garden with his two dads, and they are looking for sunflowers. And like the two dads are just kind of there in the background. It's just that like that's his family. But the structure of the book is fun because it's got this like repetition that I think works really well for young kids. So we're told the characteristics of a sunflower. It's tall, it has yellow petals, around center with many seeds, etc. And then Miguel goes through the garden looking at different plants and trying to find the sunflowers. And so it's like a sunflower is tall. Is that a sunflower? No. Those are apricots on an apricot tree. An apricot tree is tall, but it is much taller than a sunflower. And so we go through all things in the garden, artichokes, cherries, like a bunch of different things. And then at the end, they have a nice little community garden picnic with their friends, eating all of the lovely produce from the garden. It's really cute. My kids really enjoyed it. It's got some 
light sciencey stuff that's appropriate for younger kids. This was definitely a big hit with both kids. So thank you so much to the publisher for sending this along. If you guys are interested and have kids in your life, maybe go check them out. And now I will return them to my children's bookshelf so they can continue to enjoy them. Moving on, let's look at all of the adult NYA titles that were sent to me this month. First up, a small press reached out to me about a book that I think just came out. So I'm a little late reviewing it, but I will be reading and reviewing this in April. So thank you to them for sending this along. This is called Song Broken by Heather Osborne. This is coming out through Forest Path Books and it is a queer fantasy novel that sounded really interesting. It says she sang a vow to learn to heal, but the person she needed to save was herself. Nils is a healer's apprentice faced with a difficult choice. Only men are allowed to be healers, but if Nils denies her heart and chooses that path, neither a healer's status nor the bomb of study will make up for losing a chance at marriage with the person she loves. Instead, concealing her true self from everyone she knows, Nils risks a dangerous journey to the distant city, desperate to find a balance between life's passion and heart's life. But always the question remains, can a healer's songs truly work for a woman? And should Nils' deception be discovered, she will be songbroken, shunned by her family, dismissed by her master, and denied any contract, vow, or relationship. So yeah, it just sounded really interesting coming out from a small press. Thank you to Forest Path Books for sending this along. If this sounds interesting, go check it out. I believe it is available available now or will be available very soon and I'll be reading and reviewing it in April. Then Tachyon Publications sent an advanced copy of a book coming out in August that looks amazing. This is called The Bruising of Kilwa by Nassim Jamnia. It comes out August 9th and this sounded really interesting. It's not very long. It's a pretty short little novel, but it says, in this intricately layered debut fantasy, a non-binary refugee practitioner of blood magic discovers a strange disease causing political rifts in their new homeland. Persian American author Nassim Jamnia has crafted a gripping narrative with a moving nuanced exploration of immigration, gender, healing, and family. So the author is a non-binary Persian American and this just sounded incredible. I love the cover. I'm very excited to pick this one up. So thank you so much Tachyon Publications for sending along a copy. Then I have a bunch of things from Tor and Tor.com. Like I said, they're very good to me and I appreciate it. One of these is an arc that I actually won in an Instagram giveaway. I don't win giveaways very often, but I was excited for this one. I have an advanced copy of Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald. This is a very anticipated fantasy novel coming out in June. Ed McDonald writes grimdark fantasy. This is the first book in a new series he's writing. Rain can see and speak to the dead, a gift that comes with a death sentence. All her life she has hidden, lied, and run to save her skin, and she's made some spectacularly bad choices along the way. But it is a rare act of kindness, rescuing an injured woman in the snow that becomes the most dangerous decision Rain has ever made. Because the woman is fleeing from Red Winter, the fortress monastery of the Dreoin, warrior magicians who answer to no king and will stop at nothing to reclaim what she's stolen. A battle, a betrayal, and a horrific revelation force Rain to enter the Citadel and live among the Dreoin. She soon finds that her secret ability could be the key to saving an entire nation, though she might have to die to make that happen. It sounds fantastic. Coming out this summer, I am excited for it. I love this cover. Thank you so much to Tor. Tor also sent a finished copy of a new edition in the Tor Essentials line where they publish modern classics of science fiction and fantasy. This is by Ursula K. Le Guin. It's called Worlds of Exile and Illusion. It is a bind up of three of her novels in the Hainish series, Rokanon's World, Planet of Exile, and City of Illusions. I have been wanting to read more Le Guin this year. I haven't read much from her at all. And so when they reached out to me about this, I was like, yes, please. That sounds great. Wonderful opportunity to read more. And I really like that they have these nice additions in the Essentials line coming out for people who are interested in reading from more of the history of sci-fi fantasy, because sometimes we can get so focused on what's coming out newly that we might miss some things from the past. So thank you to Tor. I'm excited to read this. Next, Tor sent me a finished copy of the brand new edition of The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I am so excited for this and I'm really excited to do a reread. I had read the indie version of this, but they picked it up and are publishing it traditionally. It has been edited, it has been expanded, and supposedly it's even better. Also, this book is beautiful. Let me show you. It's got this under the dust jacket. It's got these beautiful like library end papers. And if you've read the original, you might know that there were illustrations 
but the illustrations for this edition are even higher quality. They're even better. So like here's an example. They used the same artist as, as the original, but they're more filled in. So I'm really excited to read this. I am planning a reread and uh, yeah. Two more from Tor, Tor.com, one from Tor.com, one from Tor. These are advanced reader copies of books coming out later this year that I'm very excited for. Coming out in July, we have A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. This sounds amazing. It is a queer political fantasy romance by a non-binary author. I'm I'm very excited for it. It says, Vilas and Vin Arrow never planned to marry at all, let alone a girl from neighboring Tythena. And when an ugly confrontation reveals his preference for men, Vel fears he's ruined the diplomatic union before it can even begin. But while his family is ready to disown him, the Tythenai envoy has a different solution for Vel to marry his former intended's brother instead. Okay, so like he was betrothed to a woman but now he's like, I'm actually not into women. So they're like, okay, then marry her brother. And so there's like a political marriage. I'm very excited for this. It hits on a lot of things that I'm really interested in. It's got Byzantine politics, a queer love story. I like, yes, 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 yes. And then lastly from Tor.com is what's maybe one of my most anticipated releases for the rest of the year. I think this got pushed back to August. It was originally coming out in June, but I think it got pushed to August. This is A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland, and this is also a queer political fantasy romance, but this one is a bodyguard romance. So it's a prince and his bodyguard falling for each other. It looks amazing. I have been hearing a lot of buzz about this one. I've been hearing authors raving about it, so I'm very excited to read it, and it's got a gorgeous cover. So... Thank you to Tor.com. I'm excited to read this one. And then lastly from publishers, Fierce Reads over at Macmillan sent me a whole box that I was not expecting and it's pretty awesome. I told you it's been a good month for publishers sending stuff. I, I was not joking. It's, it's been awesome. So I will briefly show you what's in the box. Ta-da! Okay, let me put this down and I'll show you everything that came inside. Like I said, I, I did not know that this was coming until like a couple days before they sent it and I'm, I'm excited. We have a cute little Fierce Reads pouch and inside are little sticky notes to use for tabbing while reading and a cute little collapsible book light which is perfect for traveling. Love that. But then they included four finished books four of their new releases that they wanted to share. And I am really excited about a lot of these. First up, we have The Lost Dreamer by Liz Huerta. Gorgeous cover. This I also have on audio because it was one of the influencer review copies from Libra FM this month. So I'm, I'm really excited to read it and it sounds amazing. This is a debut fantasy novel from a Mexican-American author following a girl who is a dreamer descended from a long line of seers able to see beyond reality. She carries the rare gift of dreaming truth. But when beloved King Anne's dies, his son and heir has no respect for this time-honored tradition. Newly crowned Alcan wants an opportunity to bring the dreamers to a permanent end, an opportunity Indira will give him if he discovers the two secrets she is struggling to keep. As violent change shakes Indira's world to its core, she is forced to make an impossible choice, fight for her home or fight to survive. So it follows two teen girls who are seers. There's like political stuff going on. It says it's inspired by ancient Mesoamerica. Very excited to read this one. They also sent a copy of Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie, which is so exciting. I remember when Raquel was a baby booktuber and now she's a whole published author. It's very exciting. And this sounds great. It is a YA contemporary debut novel about a Latinx girl who realizes she is bisexual and it's like a coming of age story. Sounds awesome. They also sent a finished copy of Travelers Along the Way by Amina Mae Safi. This is a Robin Hood retelling that is gender bent and centers two women in Palestine during the Crusades. I had an arc of this and didn't end up finishing it. It wasn't totally my cup of tea, but other readers and reviewers seem to be enjoying it a lot more than I did. So I will probably pass this along to someone who might enjoy it more, but I really appreciate Fierce Reads sending it. And then lastly is a book I haven't heard a lot about, but I'm very intrigued. This is One for All by Lily Lanoff. It's a gender flipped retelling of The Three Musketeers, 
following girls who end up becoming musketeers, but the main character also has a chronic illness. I think she has POTS. And I just think that's such an interesting story to tell. I believe the author also is chronically ill. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested in checking this one out. So huge thanks to Fierce Reads for all of those books. That's amazing. Next, let's talk about the books that I bought for myself this month. Three of these I think actually showed up in a reading vlog that I did at the end of February. So I'll link that video up above if you haven't seen it. So you, you maybe have seen that I got these already. But I met up with a friend for brunch and book shopping and I did pick up a couple of things. I got Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I love this cover. This has been on my radar for a while. It is Ashley Herring Blake's first adult novel. It is a queer romance between these two women and it sounds great. I really want to read it. I also picked up a used copy of Cameron Battle in the Hidden Kingdoms by Jamar J. Perry. This was only $8.50, which I thought was a good price for it. And I've heard really good things about it. It's a middle grade fantasy novel with a black boy main character. And this I partly got because I feel like maybe my kids would be into this as they are getting more into reading. So I wanted to have it on our shelves and I'm also interested in reading it. And then lastly, I got a copy of Bunny by Mona Awad. I've heard this is a very strange book. I know Kayla from Books and Lala really loved it a lot and I, I'm intrigued. I want to try it myself and see what I think. Then this month I had a little bit of money for my Amazon affiliate payments. If you guys use the links in my video descriptions, I get a small percentage of whatever you spend there. And I usually use it to buy more books for the channel. So this month, I use that to pick up The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb and Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb just in time for the read along I'm doing. I mean, I needed to have these anyway. So uh, I love these beautiful UK covers. They're very pretty. I absolutely adored Ship of Magic and I am so excited to continue on with Mad Ship in April. Then I just have two more books and my book of the month box. First up I stopped by one of my local indie bookstores Books of Wonder which is an amazing children's bookstore in New York City and they had signed copies of one of my favorite books that I've read this year that I hadn't purchased yet so I was like um okay yes I'm going to get that thank you. This is All My Rage by Saba Tahir. I adored this. It's a hard-hitting YA contemporary, which is not usually my thing, but oh my god, this book was so good. It made me cry. The characters were incredible. It dealt with really rough topics, but it was just amazing. And so when I saw they had signed copies, I was like, uh, yes, please, thank you. I will, I will pick that up. So I now have a copy of this to go on my favorites shelf. If you haven't read it yet, it's really, really good. And then lastly, I had a little bit of money from selling books to my other local indie bookstore, The Strand, and I used that to cover most of the cost of Tripping Arcadia by Kit Mayquist. This just sounds like a book that I will love. It's been on my radar. It finally came out and I was like, you know what? I am, I'm gonna get this because I feel like I'm gonna love it. I'm a big fan of gothic novels and this sounds really interesting. It says a propulsive and atmospheric modern gothic filled to the brim with all the splendor of the great Gatsby and all the secrets, lies, and darkness the opulence can hide. It follows a med school dropout who's desperate for any job to help her parents who are approaching bankruptcy. So when she's offered a position working for one of Boston's most elite families, as illustrious as they are secretive, Lena knows she must accept it. No matter how bizarre the interview, or how vague the job description. So she ends up working for this family and weird stuff goes on. It sounds great and it is the debut of Kit who is a bisexual trans mask writer. You know, I like to support diverse authors on this channel so I picked that up. Finally, I have my book of the month box and I, I feel like you've probably heard this from other people but this month they started offering seven options instead of five. Seven. It's a lot. Uh, so I, <laughs> I got two books. I mean, there were seven options. This is not sponsored, but I do like Book of the Month and I do have a link down below where if you use it to sign up, I get a free book, which is nice when people occasionally do that. It is $15 a month, including shipping for a new release or pre-release hardcover. They have options in different genres. You can skip if you're not into any of them, which is a great feature. And like I said, there were seven options this month and I picked up two of them. So the books I got were The Verifiers by Jane Peck. This sounds so interesting. It's a debut mystery novel about a woman who works for a dating app doing background research on people on the app. 
and then I think there's like a murder or something and she's investigating, so something like that. It sounded really interesting, so I grabbed that. And then of course I had to get The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I just love the way Simone St. James writes mystery and suspense. I don't even know a whole lot of what this book is about, but I know that I've loved everything I've read from her. She's kind of an auto buy for me at this point, so I picked that up. So there you go. Those are all of the books that have come onto my shelves in the month of March. Huge thanks to all the publishers who sent me so many amazing books this month. I'm really excited to read a lot of these and share them with you all and hopefully you learned about something new and exciting this month. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, tell me about one of your most anticipated releases for the rest of the year. What is a book that you are really looking forward to for whatever reason? Leave it in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.